What's up, my precious little pack, and welcome back to Vega Conflict. I'm going to start off by just saying a few things. I'd like to say thank you for any and all support on the channel. I've been having a great time making videos for y'all. It's time for me to get into a little bit more of a daily cadence. And to start it off with, I'd like to make two videos today. The first one will be this video, the second one will be a StarCraft video. I'm going to make them within short periods of time of each other, and then I'm most likely going to prep work for the tomorrow's videos, but I just wanted to say thank you, as I said. First thing I need to say is uh, there was a poll that was started on the forums by someone I know. I was talking with them. They wanted to find out if people wanted newer, uh, new types of content, not the same content, just reskin stuff like that. Um, most of the players want the current spam of a new ship type, well, a new ship class in the same types we already have at a higher tier. To slow down, they want it to be instead of every one month, they want it at a one at a one and a half to two month time frame, if not longer. They want lower repair times, lower build times, things like that. Things have plagued the game for a while now. I'm still going to stick with throwing out new, different ideas and stuff like that, and I was talking about a Dreadnought class ship. I have the statistics and stuff that I was thinking of and everything else. I'm actually going to take a note from a ship they already have in-game. It just failed miserably. The movement speeds could easily accommodate a Dreadnought-class ship due to its size. It should be slow. It should not be very fast. It should move slowly. It should turn slowly. Tiny ships should have the advantage over it. It should have very long repair time compared to the amount of firepower it will have, but it should have... Around what a battleship's firing arcs are, it should have the two firing arcs, except for it should fire a little bit longer ranged, and this is going to be a little bit different. First off, let's show off its movement speed and everything like that. I was thinking, let's take a note from a ship that is garbage. Typical battleships. I was thinking, make it so it moves half as fast as a battleship for its tier, so instead of moving 200 and uh, 80, the Dreadnought could move 150 meters per second, rotate at about four, se uh, 4 degrees per second, and have a strafe of only about 30, so literally half of what a standard battleship is. But I wanted to point that out, and I wanted it to have longer ranges. Instead of having a 125% range boost, I wanted it to be in between a destroyer and a battleship, so I wanted it to have about 130 to 135, so it's not much of a step up, but it's enough that it can get the first shot off. And the reason I keep, say keep saying it instead of them is because there should be a limit, but it, it shouldn't count as a capital class ship, so it shouldn't take up your flagship slot, which is this one, because you only get one. We need a secondary slot available for a secondary ship. Dreadnought will fill this slot. Now, the slot name could be any number of things. Heavy fire support, heavy um, dreadnought clash, you know, because it could be reserved just for it. And when you put it in, it takes up the slot. So you can only have a carrier and a dreadnought. That way you have a slow lumbering heavy duty weapon. Now I was thinking it should have the armor of a cruiser per tier. And I was thinking that they do tier 1 through the current tier, so they go... They're allowed to take their time with these ships, and we play with them, and we tell them what's good or bad about them, and we improve upon them, but the main thing I wanted to say about them was this. One, for every tier they are, so let's say we take a Rancor, for, ex uh, for example, the Dreadnought of Tier 1 should have two more guns than the Rancor. Rancor has four, Dreadnought should have six. And then by the time you get to Tier 3, you have six guns. Basically, every tier... For every battleship in that tier, the matching Dreadnought should have two more guns. Now, these guns are not going to be standard guns. These are going to be researchable guns, or guns you have to earn for that tier. But they'll fill a specific slot. Let's take the Javelin flagship, for example. It's the only ship in existence that I know of right now that has a unique slot specifically for it. It's Drive Core, specifically. I was thinking implement a system like that, except for, for a super heavy weapon have two super heavy weapons per dreadnought. 
That way you don't go into seeing, oh, look, you have three or four of them. You just increase the number of um, weapons it has by two by giving them heavier weapons and giving them essentially the exact same firepower that a battleship has and then adding on two super heavy weapons. Super heavy weapon slots will fill the following role. They will be exempt from the primary firing arc. They'll have a full 360 degree firing arc, but they should have a very long reload speed. They should not be able to hit the target reliably unless it's an energy weapon or a tra um, tracking projectile such as a homing missile. So if you're firing a super long ranged high powered projectile weapon on this from the super heavy class at let's say 5,000 meters or something like that, well 6,000, because you want the boost, the weapons range boost to affect the super heavy weapons, but you want their base range to be low so it doesn't just jump out and outclass the destroyer, because I wanted it to be under the destroyer in terms of range, so you know, destroyers would be a viable option against it, along with frigates and other small ships. Because small and nimble would be able to close in. Your other option would be fight a dreadnought with a dreadnought. Dreadnoughts could fill a very specific role as well. One, Kicks out wants players to take repair time, while we want to reduce repair time, but also get more for our repair time. Dreadnoughts should have a 1 to 1 repair time ratio for 1 second for 1 hit point of armor, which would be balanced, but you can only have 1 per fleet, so it wouldn't kick your repair time up by some absurd amount. They should be able to match the cruisers of their tier with armor, but have a very specific role. That role could be any number of things, from heavy fire support, as I said, or you could have something else on it. Let's say it has a higher number of standard special slots, so it could be a large, uh, high-caliber cargo ship. Or for low levels, it could be an alternative for a carrier. So let's say you don't have a t uh, Tier 2 carrier, you don't have the Midgard or something like that, you could take a Dreadnought in, let it take the beating. And I was thinking that they should be limited to two shields from level one, from tier one all the way up. They should not get more than two shields. They should be able to use shield technology from each tier, though, which would allow them to mediate and be a little bit more adaptable to combat in higher tier combat, specifically against alien damage and such and the such. how they would look, they should be around the size of a carrier because they're going to be a massive ship. They're going to be slow, they're going to be lumbering unless you equip fusion thrusters or something on them to get them to move a little bit more quickly, but even then, you're still only going to be moving slower than a standard battleship without any engines. The objective is it needs to be slow and lumbering, but deadly as can be. And as for the weight, I was thinking that double whatever the weight for whatever battleship class is in said tier. So let's take the Rancourt Tier 1. You have over 2,000 tons worth of weight, so let's say the Dreadnought of Tier 1 would have 4,000 tons. Makes sense. And as for the Tier 1 researchable super weapons, we shouldn't have to research multiple levels of the super weapons. We should be able to research one level, and that's it. Equip time of super weapons should be scaled per tier. So for Tier 1, you should be able to build and fit at least one to two dreadnought class ships every eight to ten hours. You should be able to fit an entire squadron's fleet worth. You should be able to get six or seven of them over the course of a 24 hour time frame, depending on what you fit them with. But I said I would talk about this, and I never did, so it was time to bring it up again. And this is something to help. Take the repair time and stuff like that and actually mediate it a bit because we'll have the long repair time on the ships except for in the Xenon Axis because it'll have to be reduced to match their reduced repair times. They'll have absurd armor and stuff like that, but it shouldn't change how the game plays overall. One, if you're a skilled player, a Dreadnought will be nothing for you to destroy if you have a fast-moving strafing ship, such as a frigate. So, unless you're fighting with energy weapons, on your dreadnought, which should have a lower range than most others, they should be affected by the standard um, uh, specials. They should be affected by the standard specials. They shouldn't have specials just for their big guns. They should use standard specials. They should just have a set of weapons. It would be interesting to see, and with the weight on the ships, it would also restrict what you can do. So you can't just say, well, I'm going to put the biggest gun on the smallest dreadnought and then put it up against the highest level target. 
I'm going to put the biggest armor and stuff like that. No, not quite. You shouldn't be able to do that. And I think it would be an interesting challenge to Kickside to be able to do that. And I actually have quite a few ships that I'm currently building and fielding that I, that could use a Dreadnought over a Carrier or a Carrier and a Dreadnought. And it would make the fleets a little bit more easy to set up. Right now, the Loyal Battalion formation is your standard. You have your Carrier in the back, you have your ships in the front. Well, you could change that a bit and you could think a little bit more because you could have the Dreadnought be your spearhead just because of its armor firepower and range. It wouldn't be much much farther than battleships so they'd be able to close in and open fire on it and if they stay in its firing arc um, failure for its actual weaponry and not the heavy guns then it'd be interesting to see how it works out. Or have us all of its weapons only fire on the firing arc of the battleship so it has heavy blind spots that could be easily stayed in by fast moving ships. Uh, the general idea behind this actually came because I I do like seeing new content in game and a while back I said I was bored with the game not the game specifically the things that I do in game this would give me something different because it would be something else to do along with other players and if it's done correctly you could also reattract your player base that's left because one it would be something new that you haven't done ever before in this game can't say the same for battle pirates <laughs> but it would be an interesting take on a concept that could potentially be an interesting combat it would allow lower levels to have a little bit more straightforward way of aim for getting a dreadnought and a carrier along with your standard fleet dreadnought before the rest because theoretically it would be able to take on most standard fleets if you can fly it correctly now it, it wouldn't be indestructible because it would match the freaking repair times and stuff of its tier so if you heavily fit a tier one it should have heavy armor and stuff like that so you know if you take heavy armor heavy weaponry heavy shielding you should take heavy repair time that's just how that wor works except for it would only be on a single ship because you should only be allowed one per fleet because as it stands we only have a single flagship slot per fleet and that I can say was correct because each fleet can have a flagship slot that's acceptable. I want to see a heavy slot added though, so let's say we have the heavy slot here, it would move the flagship over and it would show some type of heavy ship class or another ship, a heavy gun or something like that, or maybe just a gun, that would be your dreadnought. But I want to see what the players want to see now, I want to see the cadence at which new technology is released to slow. I want to see lower tiers revisited, because that was another thing that people want. They want lower tiers revisited. They want them to be a little bit more different or something like that. And I actually have a little bit of something I found funny. Uh, yeah, it was VSEC. There's quite a few ships in the VSEC group that I find the description slightly funny for what they are. Their description still states that it is that of which it was before the Grand Rebalance. They're faster than most standard ships and stuff like that in most of the descriptions. In turn, that is not true. They're actually slower in most cases, and we already know that. They're the same speed as all ships because they standardized everything. And I wanted to see new stuff being brought in the game. What do you all think of the Dreadnought idea? Should it have steam behind it and we should try and push Kixai to slow the Cadence down and start reworking stuff and start adding a new ship class in once in a while just to breathe a little bit of life in the game? I think that would be interesting. I think coiners may actually like it because it would add a new ship type for them to add to their fleet. Granted, it would be you'd have to keep a close eye on where it's going and what it's doing if you fight with the AI on. Or you'd have to learn to fly it very, very carefully because it's going to be a very, very large, very, very slow ship. It should be slower than the carriers. It should be the slowest ship class in the game. It should be easily outclassed by fast-moving ships. That way there is a counter to it right off the bat. Now, as for its weapon types, it should have the standard of each tier. You should have energy, projectile, explosive, alien, and eventually when we wind up with plasma, which could quite possibly happen, plasma and so on. 
for its tier. Right now we have up to tier six and a half, and each one goes tier one, two, three, four, four and a half, five, five and a half, six, six and a half, and we're gonna have seven. So each one should have their own dreadnought, and each look should be unique. As for how the dreadnoughts will be mark upgraded, I think that they should use a mixture of both the battleship components and the care and the cruiser components combined into one. That way, you won't have to think of, well, we need to add new, new crafting material. No, just use crafting material that's already there in the new ship. You just need to add pattern drops, which could be very easily added to the following as the following. They could be added as a specialist class ship, because they should be limited. They would be unique. They could also, you could also add them in as a carrier drop. So along with the carrier drop, well, the carrier's, um, uh, the carrier supply run, you could change it so it's not the carrier supply run, but it's the capital slash super heavy or dreadnought class supply run. And it should be for each tier, tier one through this, and it'll give you the pattern, but you have to earn the other parts from the other supply runs. So it add a little bit more of an urgency, an urgent matter to be able to gather each one you need to be able to make it and mark upgrade it. Now, along with mark upgrades, how this should work, it should work as the standard. Tier one ships cannot be mark upgrade past mark two, so it should fall in suit with that. It shouldn't be able to be mark upgrade at uh, tier one past mark two. Tier two shouldn't be allowed past three. Tier four, tier five, you know the drill. Simple. But, it would have a very specific role, it would be able to mitigate some damage that we take because it would in turn be a tank. Or you could have it so it has more health than a cruiser, any number of things. It should be the heaviest ship class out there and I think that for every battleship tier, so for, let's take some of my enforcers for example, their maximum weight is what, 12,000 right now? Yeah, around that. I think they, that, they, yeah. Give me one second to gather my thoughts. <laughs> I think that it should have about 24,000 tons at their tier, and yes, I think that something that heavy should be powerful. Now, how do you scale them? Well, the tier 1 dreadnought should not be able to destroy a tier 6 fleet but it shouldn't be able to just be blown out of the sky because it should be a threat to any fleet that hits it. The damage per second on it should be unrivaled for any other ship class, but that's where it steps into its own. It should only have a limit of one per fleet. So, you know, you could have a maximum of seven, but you could have hundreds built in reserve, so if you break one, you just switch it out. Go ahead and let me know what you all think of that idea. Let's see if we can get some steam going behind it. Throw it around in the comments, talk about it, talk about the stats, the hard stats, soft stats, all of these stats, the weaponry for it, their stats, it's super heavy weaponry, It'll it sh and it should use standard weaponry, just like all the other classes for its standard weapon slots, but for the two super weapon slots or heavy weapon slots, it should have its own researchable path, and there should be a tier for each one, so let's say we have three researchable ship tiers, tier one through three, we should have three researchable dreadnoughts with nine researchable weapons. One explosive, one projectile, one energy per tier. That way it scales up. And how the energy weapon on it should be, it should not be a beam weapon. No, it shouldn't. It should have to rely on being able to hit accurately. That way you can still dodge its attack somewhat with frigates and stuff like that. It should be a ray weapon so it just pop, 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 and you have a chance to dodge it depending on the speed. Projectile weapon, everybody knows you can dodge them, except for the range on it would mean that it could technically be used in a, a base fight, and it would be interesting to see, see the ships come out of it, that could come out of it, at least. And most of the ideas I've taken from stuff they already have in-game. One, we do have a ship that has a unique slot, which it, no other ship has. We have quite a bit in-game, to be honest. 
and keeping it slow and heavy would make make it feel like it is a dreadnought. They're big, they're slow, they're dangerous. As for the names, that that would be up in the air and up to kicks if they actually would pick up the idea. So the basic idea of this is probably going to be the title of the video. I'm talking mostly about dreadnought class ship. Well, not class, a type. Classes are an entirely different thing. The types are cruiser, destroyer, battleship, that. And mark upgrades shouldn't change. They should be required in multiple different ways. And this could also open up a new avenue of thought for Kixai. They don't have to stick with the standard ship types. They can add and mix and match just like they did with the specialists, such as the suppressor and the pegasus. Except for it would be a brand new ship type all the way up. And it would allow them to take a little bit of time, stop focusing on progressing the aim forwards, and allow people to catch up and build up the higher tier fleets while they work on this new idea. Let me know what you all think below. Would you be interested in helping push the idea? Would you be interested in trying to get Kickside to listen to that? And keep it civil and keep it calm and keep it nice over in the forums. Respectable, respectably speaking with someone is better than screaming at them to do it. And I, w I really would like to see this idea get a little bit of steam. But that's going to be it for this video, everybody. If you have any thoughts or ideas to add on top of it, or if you have a brand new idea, say so below. I want to hear from you all. I know I've, I've been reading your guys' comments lately, and... We all know the game is dying, but that doesn't mean we can't get a little bit more into it before it does die. Because if it does die, but it doesn't go under and it's still up, we'll be able to play with ship types that we might not have seen it had we not done this. But let me hear from you definitely down below. And I'll make a separate video tomorrow or the day after off of the results from this video to see if people want to change the idea of the Dreadnought and make it slightly different. Should it be heavier health than weaponry, heavier weaponry, or a better balance and be much slower than what I said it should be? Stuff like that. But go ahead and throw your stats and stuff in below. Throw in your best fitting for your ships you have now for the lower levels. And I'm going to be doing a video at some point within the next one, two, possibly three weeks with somebody else. They have some low-level fittings to take on Ancient Reapers and stuff. And since I'm mainly focused on building high-level stuff, that will allow me to help you lower levels by showing off something a veteran player has used before. But it'll be a very interesting take. I've never done that type of thing before, but I've also wanted to collaborate with someone before and... One of my fellow clan mates said a while back they wanted to collaborate, and we never got around to it, so hopefully I'll be able to do that soon as well. But I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. I've been babbling on for a very long time now. If you guys like the video, like the thought, or anything like that, feel free to smash that like button for me. Just absolutely destroy it. And if you actually like it enough, take the idea over to the forum. That's the Kickside forum. It's kickside.com. You can reach them that well. Actually, I'd have to check. Don't take that for solid. I haven't been on the site in a while. I jump right to the forum. I don't even remember the basic setup. I don't remember the. I don't remember if it's .com or something else. I'll probably leave a link to it in the description. But if you like the idea, like I said, go over there. Go to the Vega Conflict forums and most definitely drop the idea and start trying to get steam behind it. If you don't like the idea, you don't have to do anything. You can dislike the video and stuff like that, or you can just simply say why you don't like the idea. Do you not like it because it could change how the game is played fundamentally, or do you think it would just be a ship class that could alter how you play individually? Things like that. Let me know. But, that's it everybody. I'll see you all in the next video.